In a tropical semi-desert region in West Africa lies Burkina Faso, a name its people wear with pride because it means a country of honest people. Despite the extreme aridity, 90% of the inhabitants have always practiced traditional agriculture and breeding of small herds of livestock. The topsoil is poor and industry is embryonic. Rates of illiteracy, of births, of morbidity and of mortality are among the highest in the world. But in spite of the adversity, more than 60 ethnic groups are living together in harmony and peace, working together each day facing the environmental, economic and social challenges. Razo Wodrago is a Burkinabe who is helping his people. Nous sommes en Ouagadougou, capitale du Burkina Faso, pays de plus de 8 millions d'habitants. We are in Ouagadougou, capital of Burkina Faso, a country of more than 8 million inhabitants, where men and women facing difficult conditions have decided to fight for change. They are working with the help of international organizations and volunteers, fighting to improve the quality of life. Pour améliorer les conditions d'existence, pour améliorer la vie simplement. Deux habitants qui euh, se sont regroupés pour lutter contre les aléas climatiques, contre les conditions difficiles de vie et pour aussi améliorer leurs conditions de vie. Ouagadougou, c'est un peu le concentré de tous les ONG, toutes les organisations non gouvernementales. Ouagadougou is the center of all the non-governmental organizations in Burkina Faso. The center for all the international institutions and volunteer organizations that have decided to attack the illnesses of underdevelopment. They are fighting for the development of women and for family planning. They are fighting for the betterment of the population by increasing literacy, by enabling handicapped people to have a role in society, and by combating the encroaching desert through massive reforestation in many parts of the country. Here we have a little country in which its people know that their survival depends on the efforts they themselves put forth. They know their future depends on their willingness to abandon their difficult conditions of existence by making major changes in their lives. Razo saw death and suffering when he was here in the desert of Orsi, volunteering with the Swedish Red Cross during the Great Famine of the early 1970s. He reflects upon the great ecological and social disruptions which have shaken the foundation and modified forever the lives of the people of Burkina. Autour des années 1970-1975, s'est installé au Burkina Faso un phénomène sans précédent. Un phénomène qui a engendré une longue période de famine pendant laquelle des hommes, des femmes, des enfants ont perdu toute leur dignité. Around the years 1970 to 1975, an unprecedented phenomenon settled in Burkina Faso, a phenomenon that engendered a long period of famine during which men, women and children all lost their dignity. During which we saw men and women fight for a morsel of bread during which we saw men and women fight against their own children to save themselves. That was hard. That was very hard. The vegetation had progressively disappeared with the advance of the desert. People had been forced to abandon their villages. Tragedy struck the heart of families. 
people were obliged to leave their own land in exile, to migrate to other lands. That was a difficult period and very trying for Burkina Faso. One again sees images of airplanes that parachuted food. Food coming to save the men and women fell on them and killed them as they ran under the planes in desperation, hoping to get the food. Just next to the dead, men and women divided the food and ignored the dead. During the long periods, we saw people hiding food. We saw people gathering up their own vomit to eat it again because they had no other hope. We saw livestock perish, trees die. Look around here. You see how the desert advances. You see what caused the tragedy. It was very hard and very trying for the Burkinabe people. But since then, the men and the women of the country have organized to take control of their lives. They have decided to fight against the climatic hazards, against erosion, against the advance of the desert. They have decided to organize for the amelioration of their conditions of existence by simply changing their mentality. It was a hard but fertile period because it encouraged people to accept new ideas, to develop initiatives for survival, initiatives to improve their lives. I believe the people of today merit our admiration. Life in Burkina Faso is hard. Two important seasons affect the life and customs. The shortest, lasting for three months, is the rainy season. It is in this period that the peasants dedicate their work to the fields, fields from which the result is a thin harvest insufficient to assure adequate nutrition. The longer, dry season is a time characterized by relative idleness and long migrations in search of work. We visited with a family who live in one of the numerous hamlets sprawling out in every direction from the heart of Ouagadougou. Clustered in this small compound of three tiny dwellings are a husband with his three wives and many children and his son with his wife and child, a family dog and a rather large family of pigs. <laughs> The wives take turns preparing the daily meal of gruel, eaten alone or with an occasional chicken or whatever else they can add to enrich the meal. Diets have little variety and the inadequate nutrition makes a fertile bed for illnesses, above all in the most vulnerable population, infants, women and the elderly. They often eat but one meal a day. The children watch and play nearby. Only a few of the children attend school, although the father wishes to have them all in school. While the government is working hard to change the level of education in the country, only a small percentage of the children manage to stay in school. Everyone clusters around their father when he returns from work. He looks after his daughter's sore foot and feeds the pigs before they all eat. The family is thinking about what they can do to improve their quality of life. As we will see, they are open to change. Mm. A few kilometers away, children are finding relief from the extreme heat, swimming in a small lake shared by fishermen and cattle. 
The environment still suffers from extreme uses of the scarce wood and from much uncontrolled grazing, although there are efforts to control both. This destruction of the vegetal cover depletes the thin soil of its nutrients, lessening even more the ability to farm or graze animals and encourages the advance of the desert. In addition to their many other difficulties, the Burkinabe people bear hard social burdens that hold back their well-being and impede their progress. These include the strong domination of women by men, the degrading, life-threatening and horribly physically and emotionally scarring practice of female excision and sexual mutilation, and the exclusion of girls from access to knowledge. Nearly 80% of the girls and women were illiterate just a few years ago. That is rapidly changing. The Burkinabe are now responsive to change. Non-government organizations are working together with them to help bring about the rapid changes necessary, not just for a better quality of life, but for survival itself. The Burkina government is devoting 40% of its resources to social rehabilitation. Throughout this beautifully diverse country, one can see and hear about changes of attitude and changes in traditions and cultural patterns, changes found to be necessary because they were holding back the possibility of a healthy future for the Burkinabe. In this area of Sabo, small clusters of houses, sometimes described by a small wall, denote extended family compounds or small hamlets with a few extended families. They too are seeking ways to improve their difficult lives. Unfortunately, it was necessary to endure the trying experience of the drought and famine to capture the common consciousness of the diverse Burkinabe population. The broad branches of the fruitful karité trees offer shade for the animals. There is in this emerging vision in the country an appreciation of the importance to use local products which today provide valuable alternatives to expensive imported products. The karité tree is a prime example. This remarkable tree is a totally usable resource. The fruits are edible, the leaves, roots and bark are used for preparation of medicines. In Po, a village south of Ouagadougou on the Ghana border. The karate tree is a valuable asset to the community. From the almonds, one extracts butter and cosmetics. The wood and almond shells are used as fuel. The women who collect and process the almonds receive substantial revenue from export sales of the karate butter extract. The butter is also used for decoration and spread on the outside of houses for protection against heavy rains. Mimosa trees, important for stemming desertification, have kindled much interest here in Kongusi, north of Ouagadougou. Mimosas retain their leaves during the dry season and thus provide food for livestock. Then, in the wet season, the remaining leaves fall off and are transformed into humus for cultivation. Kongusi is also home to the Regional Union of Cooperatives for Savings and Credit of the province of BAM. Founded as a bank for savings and interest-free loans, it provides a system through which one can, with proper effort, obtain a loan to initiate remunerative projects. The 
projects tend to be small scale and environmentally helpful, such as controlled raising of small herds of livestock, growing neem and other trees for reforestation projects, making tools, growing green beans for export to France and making textiles. Rampant grazing of cattle, sheep and goats has been responsible for vast environmental damage throughout the country. Thanks to the cooperative, Savadogo Tenga Salam keeps his herd at home and under control. He sells them to pay off the loan. They're also a major source of food for his family. The philosophy that underlies this cooperative is to favor the inclusion of women in the circle of development from which they are generally excluded. It is because of this philosophy that if a man wishes to be admitted, he must bring at least ten women for membership. The Kongusi Union started in 1983 with three villages. There are now 29 and seven more preparing to be members. There are currently 5,600 members in Kongusi. Thanks to the bank, many women and men have found new meaning to their lives. <laughs> This awakening of consciousness and changing of attitudes is bringing about strong concern to take better care of health. To do this, they need supportive services. The government is responding to this need together with the help of volunteers, non-governmental organizations and international institutions. UNICEF, UNESCO and the United Nations Population Fund are helping along with others. At ABBEF, the Burkinabe Association for the Well-Being of the Family, headquarters in Ouagadougou, women are coming for family planning counseling, for health checks and for advice on the care of their children. <laughs> At this clinic, a branch of the International Planned Parenthood Federation, doctors and nurses provide comprehensive maternal and child health care and offer frequent checkups. The patients are grateful and encourage their friends to come for family planning and health care for themselves and their children. Un des projets importants euh, initiés par le gouvernement burkinabé pour euh, l'amélioration des conditions d'existence des populations. An important project initiated by the Burkina government to improve the health conditions of the people is the establishment of centers for maternal and child health care. We are here to visit the center in Samandine in Ouagadougou. Et les dispensaires. Et c'est dans ce cadre donc que nous visitons le SMI de Samandine à Ouagadougou.
My name is Madame Sola Jeanne d'Arc. I am a midwife at the SMI, Centre for Maternal and Infant Health of Samandin. In the country's health program, Burkina Faso has created centers for the promotion of health for the mother and child. The center, SMI Samandin, is part of this program. There are four sections, the prenatal section, which addresses the care of the mother from the beginning of pregnancy, the nursling section for the care of the newborn through five years of age, the postnatal section for consultations with the mother after birth of a child, and the section for family planning, which addresses infertility and contraception for the prevention of unwanted pregnancies. The SMI nurses and midwives are bilingual, speaking in French and Mori. Parents learn about the importance of nutrition to prevent childhood illness and death. On vous examine, on, on vous fait rentrer dedans, on enlève le slip, on vous met un spéculum pour regarder à l'intérieur du col s'il n'y a pas de maladie. On vous parle plein aussi pour voir s'il n'y a pas de maladie. Women learn they must have medical examinations before they have injections or begin taking contraceptive pills and have frequent checkups while taking the contraceptives. The women are themselves the best conveyors of knowledge, exchanging new ideas with their friends, sharing information and encouraging education. It is with their help that centers for maternal and child health and family planning are spreading across the country. Midwives from the centers go to families' homes, sharing ideas, information and contraceptive supplies, and helping to overcome prejudice. They take us back to Sabo in the suburbs of Ouagadougou, where a chief is open to new ideas. Under the magnolia tree, the chief visits with midwives, learning about contraceptives together with his wives, mother and children. To have many children has since the dawn of time been the desire of all men in Africa. To have many children has been synonymous with virility, respect, strength and riches because having children was seen as the means to have the arms for working the fields. Today, realizing that economic difficulties necessitate spacing and limiting births, and realizing the need to address the problems of maternal and child health, the walls of resistance are falling, one after another. In Burkina Faso, chiefs are in the best position to bring about changes in attitudes. They are respected and listened to. They are the keepers of traditions. People come to them for advice and guidance. If traditions are to change, they must be the leaders. Chiefs are the ones who are particularly capable of bringing about acceptance of new ideas. The midwives pass a diaphragm. The child thinks it looks like a good toy. Understanding the importance of setting examples and acting as intermediaries, many chiefs are now acting to sensitize the population, sharing information and educating people about maternal and child health, family planning and sexually transmissible infections.
Not far from the chief and his family, boys are helping collect water for their families. This was traditionally a task only for girls and women. The midwives are coming to meet with the family we visited in Ouagadougou. The father is determined to help enable his children to get an education. He wants them to have a more certain future, free from hunger and illness, and now recognizes that this means he should not have more children so he can use the little he earns to more adequately care for his existing family. <laughs> it was a hard decision for him, one going against the traditions and customs set down by generations of his family. But his doubts have diminished and he is finding what he has to do to prevent more births. He welcomes the midwives to discuss family planning. <laughs> Well, he does still express concern that a single child offers no guarantee. He now believes spacing births by three or four years is acceptable. However, he says it would not be fair to refuse sexual acts with his wives. <laughs> they laugh as they discuss contraceptives. The midwives introduce him, his wives and children to condoms as a means to prevent unwanted births and still enjoy having sex with his wives. <laughs> Changes are taking place all over Burkina Faso. In southwestern Burkina Faso, an area with a relatively gentle, moist climate, vast expanses of land once heavily inhabited by antelope, monkeys, chimpanzees and roe have been replaced by the expanding population. Some land is being set aside for the wildlife. In an area where many streams irrigate the region and foster the formation of animal reserves, hippopotami have been given a safe haven north of Bobo di Olasso. They luxuriate in lakes set aside for them as one of the UNESCO biosphere reserves. Bobo Diolasso is an economic center for Burkina Faso, an industrial city with several factories. 
Here, tomatoes are processed into paste and sauces for export. Peanut and cottonseed oil is extracted, motorbikes are assembled, and soap and drinks are produced. Bobo Diolasso, a city of traditions, is now leading important efforts to bring about significant changes. They are working to conquer female illiteracy and to see to it that young girls are no longer excluded from educational and job training opportunities. They are fighting against the practice of female excision and genital mutilation. And they are convincing people of the necessity to adopt family planning and to undertake major efforts to prevent sexually transmissible infections. Burkina Faso is faced with one of the fastest increases in incidences of AIDS in sub-Saharan Africa. That situation can't be ignored. In the reversal of another tradition, young girls and boys are found together here at the ABBEF center, learning about contraceptives, sex education and family planning. Discussing sex was traditionally never done between the sexes. Their leader is saying that there is no vaccine to prevent sexually transmissible infections. He says that all the world knows that young people are sexually active. The only way to avoid these sexually transmissible infections is to use the condom. He shows them a condom and tells them how they are used so they can teach others. As Mr. Caboret Seydoux, head of this ABBEF effort, relates, the strategy undertaken by the Burkina Bay Association for the Well-Being of the Family here in Bobo Dialasso is to send youth volunteers out into districts, villages and schools to spread the word, to take samples of contraceptives and to educate others about their use. They meet with other young people to discuss their specific problems and how to deal with them. They discuss sexually transmissible infections and avoiding unwanted pregnancies and discourage early sexual involvements. There is just a small staff, but they have 3,000 trained volunteers and chapters in 19 towns. The youth program for 10 to 24 year olds has grown from 21,000 to 77,000 in just the last two years. Also, in Bobo Dialasso, the midwife clinic is undertaking a large campaign to sensitize women about family planning. Each day, animators such as Mr. Bamba talk to men and women about the necessity to space births, encouraging use of various methods of contraception and discussing the problems of maternal and child health. Whole families join together to learn. The women are very attentive as different types of contraceptives are passed around and described. They learn and then become links in a long chain of people reaching one another. They sensitize them to new ways of thinking and provide information and education for the whole community. South of Bobo lies Banfora. In this slush area, cattle graze accompanied by egrets.
Roads are lined with sugarcane fields where many local people find work. Mango trees provide abundant fruit for roadside sale. Banfora is an area where people are facing grave health problems. Respiratory diseases, river blindness, malaria and many diarrhea related problems. Their health is aggravated by the lack of sanitation and clean water and constant malnutrition. 33 maternal and child health care centers are now addressing these problems. The head nurse introduces the women and children to the programs they are offering to help them avoid the deadly diseases. Each day, more than 20 mothers come with their children for family planning, counseling, examinations, and vaccinations. <laughs> Dr. Dakuyo, a chemist who has been doing research in natural medicines for 12 years, is finding local inexpensive solutions for many medical problems. He is in a field in Beragadugu, one of his cultivation sites from which he gathers herbs for medicines. The mercies au point quelque médicament très simple à partir des plantes. Actuellement ces plantes là nous les avons à l'état naturel. Et nous allons dans la nature, nous essayons de récolter ces, ces, ces plantes-là, mais euh, de façon rationnelle, en collaboration avec euh, les services techniques chargés de la protection de l'environnement. He produces and packages 77 medical products here in his small laboratory in Banfora. Medicines for hypertension, asthma, hemorrhoids, hepatitis, dermatitis, diabetes and many other ailments. They are sold all over Burkina and in the surrounding countries. It costs just over a dollar for one month's supply of a medication against diarrhea. Dr. Dakuyo is working directly with a group to protect the environment. They are finding backing for the preservation effort by emphasizing the health and economic benefits that might be gained from the land. This plant is very interesting for treatment of coughs, simple coughs. It is sufficient to chew and swallow the juice. It calms the cough. Le jus, et ce jus la calme très bien à tout. In the arid lands of northeast Burkina Faso lies one of the country's largest cities, Waiguya. Here, the tradition of planting trees, begun in the 1930s with the help of Razo Wodrago's father, is being revived today. People of this arid region are facing the encroaching desert right at their doorstep. They are finding new methods to confront desertification. One effort is called the Zai project. Here, volunteers are removing millet roots. 
They will then prepare the soil with compost to make the roots hold the soil better and better prevent erosion. Children help by removing rocks from the fields which will be planted with millet. They use the rocks to create barriers against erosion. In this hierarchical society, tasks are age and gender specific. The older men supervise and inspect the work. Other fields are planted with special herbs chosen for holding the soil. The efforts begin to show results. The task is daunting, but little by little, these efforts and others like them are beginning to make a difference. Also based in Waiguya is a non-profit organization, ECLA, which is transforming the lives of hundreds of physically and mentally handicapped individuals. ECLA means to be like the others. It was established by a small group of volunteers who work to integrate physically and mentally handicapped individuals into society by teaching them to read and to apprentice in practical manual trades. Mr. Musa Bologoy is head of ECLA. We are here in the nursery of the Nere Enterprise. This nursery is the result of the work of the physically handicapped and the socially maladjusted. We are raising plants in response to different contracts that we have with the municipality of Waiguya. This year we have a contract for replanting 1,100 trees. We hope that in the years to come we will have important contracts. It is with that hope that we have a nursery with 10,000 trees. Ecla receives money from the city for each tree planted, but they are not paid until the trees are a year old, and thus likely to survive the harsh, hot, arid conditions. Handicapped people from Ecla look after the trees. As part of the ECLA effort, physically and mentally handicapped individuals are working alongside of others to carve bricks out of the land. These bricks have the remarkable property of maintaining a building's temperature, keeping it cooler during the many scorchingly hot days when temperatures stay over 100 degrees. Bricks are being used for construction here in Waiguya. In another part of town, we find Association 6S, a project providing women and men with an opportunity to learn an economically viable trade while producing environmentally sound products. It is a program with an integrated approach to help improve the well-being of the people of Waiguya. <laughs> Many women have an opportunity to work with the preparation of tomatoes. The tomatoes are sun-dried and packaged for sale in the lucrative export gourmet market.
Men and women work together in the preparation of mangoes. The country's many varieties of mangoes provide highly sought after food. Beautiful rhythms created by women grinding millet and corn heard throughout Burkina are heard here as women make soap. Textiles are an important product of Burkina. Handmade on looms, tie-dyed as the splendid cloth in Kongusi, and manufactured in factories, their exquisite colors and designs make them highly desirable and readily sold both in Burkina Faso and in the export market. Among the appropriate technologies being developed here is a simple stove that consumes less wood than traditional stoves. By partially enclosing the flames and directing them to the pot, heat is saved and little wood is needed to cook a meal. Six-S is developing an efficient solar stove which uses no wood, gas or electricity. Hotels, offices and homes are using these solar hot water heaters. They operate quite simply. Pouring cold water into the system forces the heated water through for collection. These talented men produce huge quantities of wire. It is most often filled with rocks and used as infrastructures for roads in the arid north, particularly for roadbeds where the land is subjected to contrasts of aridity and heavy rains. The wire is also used for barriers against the encroaching desert. The 6S project is drawing more people than they can use. So new projects are emerging, providing job training and income for girls and boys, men and women who are finding new meaning in their lives and new hope for their futures. The Ekla, Zai and 6S project are together transforming the area. 
improving the environment, halting the encroaching desert, reducing erosion, and providing greater economic well-being for the participants themselves. From north to south, from east to west, Burkina Faso is a country that is awakening and transforming. People are becoming more conscious of their health and welfare. They are replacing man at the center of all their activities, giving more recognition to women. Women finding access to knowledge, entering into the economic fabric and finding a role in decision making is an irreversible achievement. We have seen people who now believe firmly in family planning. The physically and mentally handicapped are no longer kept apart from society. We have seen people who relearned the simple gesture of planting a tree, planting a tree to give back to nature, planting a tree to stop the advance of the desert. Everywhere, people are joining together to make new and refined goods based on use of local natural products. Appropriate technologies are being used instead of expensive and polluting big industries. We have seen a people who are mobilized, working together. From Ouagadougou to Banfora, from the desert of Ursi to Waiguya, we have seen people who are working together with courage and hope to improve the conditions of their lives, to make possible their survival and a better future. <laughs>